Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for a video you definitely didn't see coming? The brand new 40 series GPUs from NVIDIA have arrived and we actually have one in the studio and we can do ourselves a little bit of an unboxing. But is what's inside here a winner? Are AMD dead? Or is this just a marketing ploy that you should firmly leave on the shelf in your wallet in your back pocket? To kick off, we first need to look at the new specifications and what's been announced. So we've got three new GPUs for you. The RTX 4080 Super, the RTX 40 70 Ti Super and then the brand new RTX 4070 Super which is what we have inside this box here. They are also not refreshing but they're changing the original 4070 by lowering down the price. I'm not particularly happy about this one as we'll discuss a little bit later. I mean spoiler alert it's not cheap enough. What you need to remember like it or loathe it is the fact that this is a refresh so this is I was going to say similar to what Intel have done actually with their 14th gen desktop CPUs, but it's definitely better than that. Whilst the 4080 Super has, well, Nvidia told me between 1 and 5% more performance, which is fantastic, that's ironic, the price drop is actually pretty cool. So it's going to vary depending on the territory, but it's roughly £200 or dollars less than the 4080 was, which is great because that card was always overpriced and it was always the one that, it's not that it wasn't recommended, it was just probably the hardest one to recommend. I would have always gone with like a 7900 XTX that we have here or go all the way for a 4090 really. Then we do have the 4070 Ti Super. Now this one actually has a bump in VRAM, which is great. It's gone from 12 to 16 gig, makes it a lot more future proof, a lot more suitable actually for 4K gaming. I think the memory bus on this one has actually been increased as well, which should hopefully mean that it does perform better at higher resolutions as well. But we're only expecting about 10% extra performance from this. And then we have the RTX 4070 Super, which as I say, is the one that we have in the box here. And this actually looks to get about maybe 15% extra performance. And I think it's 20 21.7 or thereabouts extra CUDA cores. So there's definitely a lot more here. But in terms of the pricing of these cards, we're going to sort of sit at the same 4070 Ti range for the 4070 Ti Super. And then this one, which actually comes in at 599, which is what we had with the previous 4070. Now, the problem with that 4070 is that it has dropped by only $50. I think it would have been a lot better if they'd actually matched AMD's $499 that you can get for their 7800 XT. Because you've kind of got that same problem them that the 7700 XT has where it's not really that much money for a fair bit more performance. So I think most people probably want to step up to the Super, but crucially the VRAM is the is, is the card. The VRAM is the same on both of these two cards. So that is the key information on these cards anyway, but I promised you guys an unboxing and some opinion. So let's get straight to that. And I don't want to undersell this, but this is probably going to be very similar to all of the other cards that we've seen. I'm expecting that this will be the size of the 4070 rather than the, where is it, the 4080 the 4090 and the 4070 Ti, but we are gonna do a little bit of a comparison because I believe there's been a subtle tweak. Yes, there we go. I mean, actually that's quite cool. It's a fully decked out or fully blacked out card look. Even the Super logo isn't green. I think that's something that annoyed a fair few people on the 20 Super range. So yeah, it's not exactly gonna be a night and day difference, but if you're going for like a all black build, then this is gonna surely look better. Maybe a white and black build as well, but obviously if you're going for a particular color palette, then this isn't gonna blow your way, but a fair bit more stealthy. Founders Edition on this was pretty cool. Power requirements of this are still gonna be very low. Nvidia is fantastic for efficiency. As is the case, of course, with these new 40 series of cards, you are gonna have to make do with one of these adapters. At least with the 4070s, it's only like a two-way splitter that doesn't look so bad. It's not one of these like crazy 4090 four-way splitters that look really ugly. I would say you could get the new cable mod adapters, but since I made that video, they've helpfully been recalled. But here you are, this is the 4070 Super. Here's the old one. You can definitely see the color difference when I put them side by side. A lot more sort of decked out. Looks pretty cool, but nothing to write home about. Something that is definitely a little bit troubling meanwhile though, is the fact that they haven't taken the opportunity to refresh the IO. And I imagine this is down to like a technical reason because as I say, these are refreshed GPUs. But these display ports are still 1.4 rather than the brand new 2.1 that you'll find on the AMD cards that are now over a year old, which is annoying, but still not really a game changer per se, because you can still do 4K 240 hertz via DSC with one of these cards. Obviously it does mean that it's not quite as future proof, but fundamentally I would always buy a graphics card for sort of today, maybe the next few years or so. And I don't think this is ever gonna have enough power to properly take advantage of those larger and more high resolution, more pixel popping 
screens in the first place. But it is a bit disappointing because I guarantee there will be people in the future that will have one of these cards, will get one of these monitors, and then will have to upgrade their GPU to get the full capability. But let's do a quick comparison with our other cards. We'll do this under the overhead so you can see the AMD 7900 XTX is much larger than this. I think it's slightly thicker actually as well. It's not anything crazy, but actually both of these should fit into most PC cases. And don't forget that because this is not a pass-through card, this AMD one, this is actually going to be better for ITX as long as it fits. Whereas this, you do have that pass-through design, so you're not going to get the best ventilation if you're sort of putting this up against like a solid bit of metal like you find in a lot of ITX cases. But I like the design overall. This is versus the 3070 Ti. Obviously this is an 8 gig card, whereas this is a 12 gig card. So this is more future-proof, but definitely not the most future-proof out there. I guess this is not really for 4K gaming because of that. I do think it will pose you an issue in some titles in the coming years, but whether it's a drastic issue is something we're just going to have to sort of wait and see. But again, you can step up to that larger 4070 Ti Super if you do want to go for 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Or of course, you can look at the 7800 XT from AMD that comes straight out the door with a lower price tag and 16 gig of RAM. So. Analysis time. What do I make of all of these cards? Well, as I say, it's a tail of sort of two heads, really. That makes no sense. It's a coin with a head and a tails on it. It's like Batman. But I do think this puts NVIDIA in a much better position than it was before. I mean, cynicism aside for a second, getting more for less is always good. And I do think that AMD have a really easy counter to this. They can just lower the prices of their cards because they've pretty much shifted now all of the stock of their previous series so they can focus on what they're releasing now. But we are now starting to get to the point where people will be saying, oh, maybe I'm just going to wait to the next generation of these GPUs rather than spend something today. And at the time of filming, it's January, so I don't think this is much of a threat. I wouldn't expect 50 series to actually land in your hands till like at least October, maybe like November, December. We don't obviously know yet. I mean, we still haven't seen anything from the 4050, so maybe it is going to be a while before we see the next gen of GPUs. It is very hard to say, but obviously NVIDIA are going to be touting all of their exclusive features, things like the DLSS 3.5, the Ray Recon instruction, more and more games are going to have path tracing. And I have to say that if I had to choose at the exact same price and the exact same performance, then I would pick an NVIDIA card at the moment. But obviously that's not the case. You can still save yourself some money, get that 16 gigabytes of VRAM and go for AMD. So until we've actually put this head to head in multiplayer titles, we're not going to know for sure which way you should go. But especially the 4070 Ti Super, I'm glad that they've kind of fixed that card because 12 gigabytes of VRAM, I know some people would find that a little bit limiting in a few years. And then, as I say, that 4070, I, I just think you should probably spend the extra and bump up the way to the brand new one, but it's going to depend on current pricing. And then the 4080 Super, well, there's not really too much to say about that. If the performance is basically going to be exactly the same, even though it now has like the fastest memory you can get, that's also a 16 gig card. AMD has more VRAM, but then I would much rather have a 4080 in my system than something like a 7900 XDX if I was exclusively, or at least playing a lot of those RTX features where you can use the DLSS 3 and the better ray tracing. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this though. What do you make of the new Super range? Do you think this is the difference really for you to now buy Nvidia or are you waiting for the next gen or are you gonna go with AMD? I would say wait and see what happens with AMD. We don't know yet, so I wouldn't rush out to necessarily pre-order these cards. But yeah, definitely made them a lot more enticing. And if you want a gaming PC anytime really before the summer, then I would strongly consider them and I would get subscribed so you can see the full builds that we do with them. But yeah, smash that like button if you've enjoyed this, get yourself subscribed, and we will catch you in the next video.